what's up guys it's you and welcome to uh lba week four round seven maybe i don't know it's anyways my seventh lba battle um i'm two and four so far in the season and i'm also really sick so i'm gonna try to keep this short um anyway i'm playing mr powers this week he drafted a sun team which explains some of my team choices such as not bringing excadrill for the first time um anyway so Looking at his team, he ended up not bringing what I thought he would bring. He ended up bringing the exact opposite. He brought Nine Tails, uh, Meow Stick, Physically Defensive Mill Tank, Specially Defensive Mandibuzz, and the Scarf Core of Nitto King and Rotom. And then on my side, I brought Specs, Got the Tail, Sub SD Leechy Lucha, <laughs> with the objective of cleaning his team with plus three acrobatics. Um, the Physically Defensive Clefable to take on what I thought was going to be Shiftry didn't end up bringing it but you know it's fine i can still serve uh some uses get some rocks for me um also brought thundy uh with a move set geared to take down both manda buzz um and venusaur and t-wave shiftry and then uh, also have dragon dance mega gyarados even though it didn't have the best team matchup i figured i should bring it and then i have especially defensive salamence in order to take on his charizard y anyway um jumping straight into it because uh don't want to make this one too long. As I already said, throw it in his little sword. You guys can probably hear it anyway. He leads off with Rotom as I end up leading off with Gothitel. My mindset was let me just trap something and get a kill. Um, but he leads with the one thing that I can't trap and then I can't get a kill against. So uh, I go into my Spideff Salamence and it actually takes this pretty well. Um, and by takes this pretty well, I mean eats it up. Um, that will be a four hit KO. And uh, you know what? iTunes is being dumb right now. Um, so sorry for all this stuff. But anyway, uh, he goes out of Mana Buzz right here, as uh, I'm just going to double switch, um, because, you know, uh, I knew he wasn't going to stay in the Shadow Ball again, judging by the damage, so I just figured, hey, you know what, I'll double and trap something with uh, Gothitelle, hopefully get a kill. Unfortunately, Specs t only does like 65 to 70% versus the specially defensive Mana Buzz, and he reveals the U-turn, which is unfortunate for me, because, because he gets to go out into his mill tank right here. Um, which is physically defensive, but I can't really touch it with Specs t -Bolt, so I'm going to go ahead and go out into Clefable right here, because I know at the very worst we can just trade rocks, and if he toxics or whatever, it's fine. I really don't see him being uh, power-up punch, so he just ends up revealing rocks and Seismic Toss right here, but uh, thankfully I will not be 4-hit KO'd by Seismic Toss. I will be 5-hit KO'd, maybe 6-hit KO'd, depending on leftovers, leftovers recovery, um, so I just go ahead and get my rocks up right there. It's not too much of a problem. And uh, right here, I'm going to go for the T-Wave uh, for two reasons. The first of which is to make sure Gyarados outspeeds at 100% of the time. And the second reason is because I can hopefully get a moon, moon Blast off. If I get a full Para, then, you know, that's unfortunate. But again, there's not a whole lot that I can do about that. Um, anyway, kind of gets after turning here because they, these are two really fat mons. Just clicking moves that are going to do minimal damage. Uh, but, you know, regardless, it doesn't really matter that much. Uh, he's just going to continue clicking Seismic Toss, but, you know, it doesn't really matter to me. Uh, I know he's going to have a recovery move, so it's just uh, whether his last uh, move slot is going to be filled with Heal Bell or whether it's going to be Thunder Wave. That is yet to be revealed, but he ends up double switching out into his uh, powers right here. Just switching out, rather. I say double switching a lot when it's not actually double, but um, as I just end up going for the Moon Blast, which, you know, is good for me. Um, I get off a chunklet of damage, but it doesn't actually do a whole lot, but, um, you know, it's fine, because I'm, I have suspicions that this is Scarf, because it would pick off Excadrill very nicely, um, so I just go into my Salamence, thinking, you know, if he Ice Beams, it's okay, um, I don't really need this for anything else, and he does end up revealing the Ice Beam, which is pretty nice, um, good plan his part gives him the 6-5 advantage but what this does is just means i get to go out to gyarados and right here i wanted to scout if he was in fact choiced um because if he is choice he's not going to stay and let me get up a dragon dance because he could potentially just straight up lose after that um and he ends up going out to mandibus which is fine by me because i just up end up doubling the right back into clef um because i know clef can take on uh whatever move this mandibus wants to throw at it um because I know it's probably Roost, Defog, U-Turn, probably Knock Off, um, maybe Whirlwind to phase out Gyarados, so he's not set up for the sub-DD set. Maybe Foul Play, I don't know. Um, but unfortunately, right here, um, I'm going to get a Crit Moon Blast. Not sure how much this one mattered, um, because I theoretically could have just trapped him later, and uh, from the range he would have been at after Moon Blast, he wouldn't have been able to uh, beat Halucha once it got up to the amount that it does end up getting up, up to, but I don't want to spoil that. Anyway, he goes out into Barry Allen, which is Rotom. And uh, right here, I have no reason to switch out. Um, the rest of my team doesn't match up very well versus Rotom. 
So I'm just gonna go ahead and fire off a moon blast. If that's, if that's my mom, we're gonna have to restart this recording. That's gonna be very disappointing. But he ends up going out into his powers right here, um, which is Nido King. And uh, I'm just gonna fire off another moon blast, which you know, I guess ends up working out for me because I get a crit. Lucky player, but you know, uh, I've had some unfortunate luck throughout the uh, LBA season so far, so anything I can get I will take. He ends up going for the T-Bolt right here, which is fine by me because I know Gothitel can take a T-Bolt no problem, even if it is a crit from this range. So I can just come back in, uh, trap this thing, get another kill with Gothitel, meaning Gothitel will get two kills this week, which is very, very nice. And uh, the next part of this battle gets a little slow because basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain the next couple of turns and then I'm going to... Uh, talk about other things for a second so what he's gonna do is gonna is he's gonna go out in a mill tank and I'm just gonna click size shock until I die that's my game plan um, because I know that this mill tank only has seismic toss at this point and it's either seismic toss T wave or seismic toss heal bell he ends up revealing heal bell so I know that there's not a whole lot he can do to me he will be able to just uh, milk drink until he's at an acceptable an acceptable amount of health and then he can just seismic toss me and kill me off but anyway um, I, I'm not sure if I mentioned this already, but uh, Gothitelle, no, not Gothitelle, uh, I traded away Gengar for Halucha, um, and this is really the first week that Halucha has uh, done some major work. Um, I thought adding Halucha would be very nice because it, in effect, makes most of my team better. Um, because it puts a lot more pressure on physical walls like this, um, especially if Gothitelle can come in and weaken like it did. And, uh, you know, I, I'm pretty pleased with the trade, but that's the common question of the video. Just go ahead and answer that. Um, do you think it was a good trade? Anyway, he's going to milk drink here on my sub, which is great for me, because that means I get at least one SD. So as long as I sub down effectively, I'm uh, plus three, which beautiful. Couldn't have asked for anything better at this point. Um... And now that I know his full moveset, it's basically just let me see how many swords dances I could get up. Theoretically, what I could have done is uh, sub down, or is just like click SD again, but I didn't want to risk him doubling the Rotom, so I just end up clicking sub again, uh, just getting down closer in my range. And I, and I know at this point he can't afford, he cannot afford to give me a free sub, because um, I will just tear through the rest of his team. Uh, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to make kind of a ballsy play, but ends up paying off for me, and uh, ends up pretty much getting me the game. Uh, I'm not gonna hold out on that anymore. I end up SDing again. He seismic tosses me. I'm now a plus five. And at this point, your boy Lucha is about to put in some work. Because um, when you have a plus five Halucha with great stab combination versus my opponent's team, it's like, bye bye. <laughs> have a nice trip. Anyway, but uh, I, I thought Mr. Power played really well this week. Um, He's been kind of tilting while I've been kind of getting used to the format, and, uh, you know, hopefully I can continue my success. Next LBA battle should be up on Thursday, but anyway, what I'm going to do right here, this because this is kind of a weird play, I didn't want him to be like the world's bulkiest Scarf Rotom, so I'm just going to click sub right here, um, because after another round of Stealth Rock recoil, or Stealth Rock damage, then I will be able to knock him out for sure with plus 5 acrobatics. Um, so he ends up going out into Scotty, which is his Meow Stick, and I'm just going to be able to knock this thing out easily with the acro, but again, I'm getting ahead of myself, because, you know, after turn effects, he gets his lefties, which is fine. And look at that, me popping up in the Skype Skype chat in the corner. By the way, D Train, if you're watching this, don't worry about it, buddy. It's, it's not that big of a deal. Anyway, but he goes back into Barry Allen after I pick up the kill with acro, and uh, I can just acro one more time. And at this point, he is down to his last mon. I have three mons left: uh, Gyarados, Thundee, and uh, Halucha. Well, he has only his nine tails, and he's gonna reveal something I haven't seen since in-game nine tails. But you know. Uh, I can see why he would run this. He's actually running Quick Attack, which is kind of cool. Um, just because he didn't... But like, If I had been on 1 HP, then, you know, that would have been a little scarier if I had chosen to run, like, High Jump Kick or something. But um, ended up running Brain Punch this week. Ended up working out, so anyway. Uh, if you guys did enjoy uh, today's LBA battle, please make sure to leave a like. It really does help show support for the stuff that I'm doing here on the channel. Also, make sure to answer today's comment question of the video. Uh, which is what do you think of the Lucha Gengar trade? And with that, I urge you guys to subscribe if you guys are enjoying the constant content. And with that, I'll catch you on the flip flop.